Leonard Bernstein was an American composer and conductor of the 20th century. Most people recognize him as the instrumentalist behind the famous Broadway production, West Side Story, but he was way more than just that. His son, Jamie Bernstein, said this about his father. My father grew up in a world of stark political contrasts. Through it all, my father clung hard to the belief that by creating beauty and sharing it with as many people as possible, artists had the power to tip the earthly balance in favor of brotherhood and peace. After all, he reasoned, if humans could create and appreciate musical harmony, then surely they were capable of replicating that very same harmony in the world they lived in. Leonard Bernstein was incredibly passionate about musical education. While he was the music director of the Newark Philharmonic, he decided to host a Saturday show titled Young People's Concerts to help share the beauty of music with as many people as possible. During this show, he discussed great composers, genres of music, and brought classical music education to a whole generation of children. The Young People's Concerts became so popular that CBS even changed the airtime from the morning to the prime viewing time at night. He viewed these concerts as some of the most highly prized activities of his life. When you showed us a clip of one of these Young People concerts titled, What Does the Music Mean? I was expecting a revolutionary musical theory perspective from Bernstein on the depths of potential meanings that music can evoke. Instead, he talked about his belief in absolute music and my first reaction was anger. I thought to myself, how could a man who could boast to be one of the most important conductors of all time think so little about something that has changed so many people's lives? I thought of the first time I had watched West Side Story and how the message of music stayed with me for months after that first viewing. Was the creation of music behind the message of that musical just another job to him? Then, we discussed in class how, despite him being an authority figure in music, it doesn't mean he's correct. And that position and interpretation of the music greatly changed throughout his lifetime. This statement gained my respect. Many people, once they become accomplished in their field, refuse to accept criticism, or that there's the slightest chance they could be wrong. However, Bernstein actively sought out new interpretations, despite knowing they could go against his beliefs. His beliefs in this instant just happened to not line up with mine. He was also a humanitarian. He campaigned for HIV and AIDS, was anti-nuclear weapons, was involved in many civil rights movements, and was overall a peacemaker. Bernstein wrote letters, donated to causes, and even wrote entire works of music in order to demonstrate his unrelenting hope of a better future. Shortly after President Kennedy's assassination, Bernstein said, this will be our reply to violence, to make music more intensely, more beautifully, and more devotedly than ever before. His compositions of works of music about racial justice advocacy did just that. In his work, West Side Story, a remake of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, Maria, a Latina, falls for Tony, a white man. At the time, mixed race marriages remained against the law in many states. So writing a love story between two people who could never be humanized those of other skin tones while pulling at the audience's heartstrings. Author Lawrence, a writer for the show, said the show was about how love can survive in a world of bigotry and violence. And there was much bigotry and violence alive at the time. Brown v. Board of Education was decided just briefly before the show's Broadway debut, leading newspapers to cover both of them on the front page simultaneously. Bernstein's combination of music education and West Side Story helped to introduce the white world to little known jazz, folk, and Latin music. Many Broadway shows and music in general have followed that incorporate heartfelt stories of typically taboo topics done in elegant ways. It also has exposed us to a whole new world of music. This class, and in particular, the lecture on Bernstein and his What Does Music Mean, has emphasized to me the impact and importance of musical education and access to music. I started playing the harp when I was seven years old. Nothing brought me more joy than finally stringing together all the parts of a piece and playing it to a captivated audience. In college, I started to lose that passion and spark. Harps were expensive and obtainable here. I feel like the talents I wanted to add and all the knowledge behind it in terms of composers, compositions, and theory were all lost. Then I took this class and you helped bring my spark back. 
I remember my harp teacher telling me during World War I, an unofficial truce happened on Christmas, and both sides could hear the other singing carols and celebrating. For a moment, in the midst of an egregious war, there was peace, partially due to music. Music has time and time again brought together people in hope, in solidarity, in awe, and a plethora of other emotions that can only be evoked by the right combination of notes. In a time filled with so much political uncertainty and strife throughout the world, music appreciation classes are needed now more than ever. Music has the power to unite and heal, but that is only possible with access to hearing it, making it, and understanding it. This, is this class has inspired others as much as it has me to make music more intensely, more beautifully, and more devotedly than ever before. Thank you.